بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم وی آر اسٹڈنگ جنرل ہسٹالوجی ٹوڈے آور ٹاپک از اسکن skin is a part of integumentary system and this integumentary system includes uh, skin with its uh, appendages which are hair and nail you all know that skin covers the surface of our body and uh, it comes into direct contact with external environment and the skin is the heaviest organ of the body which forms one sixth of the total body weight and if we see the surface area it will be 16 square feet now we take close observation of the skin you can see your hands palm of the hand it has external surface which shows lines such as tension lines and these tension lines are due to anchoring fibrils of the dermis skin also has flexor lines which are present over the joints due to which we easily flex our joints skin has friction ridges or papillary ridges over palm and sole and these papillary ridges and the intervening sulci they form a unique configuration of an individual and this unique configuration is used for personal identification here we can see in this fingerprint in which these are the ridges and in between these ridges are the sulci uh, this type of study is called dermatoglyphics or fingerprints study and it has considerable medical and legal interest and if we see the, our body this skin becomes continuous with our mucous membrane at various orifices of the body such as mouth nostrils anus urethra and vulva now we see the quickly the functions of the skin you have already studied it in the physiology first one is the protection as we see skin protects our body against mechanical trauma invasion of microorganisms and many other harmful rays second skin has sensory perceptions it has a general sensation of pain touch and temperature third one is the thermoregulation our body temperature is also maintained with the help of skin it also synthesizes vitamin d by the action of ultraviolet light skin also performs excretory function next blood pressure regulation this regulation is done by a specialized arteriovenous anastomosis which is present in the dermis of the skin and this type of arteriovenous anastomosis is called glomus skin also performs storage it is storage house for glycogen and cholesterol in the subcutaneous fat and you all see that skin also has absorption function it absorbs certain lipid soluble substances chemicals drugs as you see that different ointments or creams they can be absorbed on the surface of the skin here is the applied anatomy dermatoglyphics uh, skin is useful in personal identification especially in criminology and this is called dermatoglyph now we take the types of skin two main types thin skin and thick skin thin skin which is also called hairy skin it has a uh, following characteristics in thin skin epidermis is thin if you see this picture this part is epidermis and this is the dermis so in thin skin the component uh, epidermis is very thin second point it also has hair 
and uh, examples of thin skin are all the parts of the body except uh, palm and sole. Now we come to the thick skin or glabrous skin. Here epidermis is very thick and uh, this uh, thick epidermis is due to the thick layer which is stratum corneum thick layer stratum corneum of the epidermis second it has no hair and examples of thick skin are palm of the hand and sole of the foot now we see the structure of the skin if you see the histology of the skin it is composed of two layers Superficial is the epidermis and the deeper is dermis. The epidermis is made up of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. What is meant by stratified squamous keratinized epithelium? It has multiple layers of the cells and the superficial layer is flat cells or squamous cells. So it is called stratified squamous and it its superficial layer is uh, all contains keratin so the complete name of this epithelium is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium and dermis of the skin is made up of connective tissue if we see the junction of uh, epidermis and dermis it is not smooth the dermoepidermal junction is uh, uneven if you see this picture here we see this wavy pattern this is the junction between epidermis and dermis and it is due to two structures which are epidermal ridges and dermal papilla these are epidermal ridges and this is epidermal this is dermal papilla so due to interlocking alternately of these two structures epidermal ridges and dermal papilla and this uneven pattern is shown and these ridges are numerous tall and often branching in special areas where mechanical demand of the skin is high for example palm sole nipple penis etc and now we see the dermis it is made up of stratified squamous keratinized epithelium and it projects into the dermis as epidermal ridges these are epidermal ridges which are projecting into the dermis this light area is dermis and the dark pink area is epidermis this epidermis is ectodermal in origin its thickness varies from 0.1 to 1.4 millimeter this epidermis is avascular and its uh, nourishment is done by the diffusion next is free nerve endings are seen in its basal layer next we come to different layers of the epidermis the, its basal layer contains free nerve endings and this uh, epidermis is made up of different cells which are keratinocytes melanocytes langerhans and merkel cells and this epidermis is renewed every 15 to 30 days depending on the region of the body age of the person and many other factors this is low power slide of the thin skin here we see epidermis and this light area is the dermis these are dermal papillae and these are epidermal ridges here is high power slide of thin skin here we can see dermis uh, epidermis and here is dermis and these are dermal papilla this is dermal papilla this is dermal papilla this is epidermal ridge and it is hair follicle and these are spacious gland in the dermis
this is thick skin in which the dermis is thick as com in which the epidermis is thick as compared to the thin skin it has no hair follicles no sebaceous glands only sweat glands are present this is high power picture of the thick skin these are different layers of the epidermis and these are dermal papilla no hair follicle no sebaceous glands now we come to the layers of epidermis <coughs> We see that there are five layers in the epidermis. First one is the stratum basal, and this stratum basal is the deepest layer of the epidermis. If we see this deepest layer, this is stratum basal. It has single layer of cuboidal or low columnar cells, which are lying on the basement membranes. And these cells have property of mitosis, and mitotic figures are very actively shown here. newly formed cells move toward the superficial layer then we come to the second layer stratum spinosum this is stratum spinosum and it consists of several layers of polyhedral cells and these cells are held together by desmosomes at the spine like projection of the plasma membrane in the plasma membrane of these cells has spine like projections and these projections they are uniting with one another with desmosomes hence the stratum spinosum next uh, characteristics of these cells is that they have bundles of tono filaments which are seen under light microscope as tono fibrils and this layer is well developed in areas of skin subject to continuous friction and pressure here we can also see this is basement membrane these are the sp uh, stratum spinosum these cells have spine like processes now we come to the third layer which is stratum granulosum this layer contains 3 uh, to 5 layers of flat and fusiform cells these are fusiform cells and they are filled with basophilic keratohyaline granules these are precursors of the keratin and membrane coating granules and these membrane coating granules discharge their contents in the intercellular spaces of the granular layer and they provide epidermis a sealing effect against foreign material so the sealing effect is present in this stratum granulosum next is the stratum lucidum it is made up of flattened eosinophilic dead cells forming a homogeneous glossy layer it is a transparent or glossy layer organelles and nuclei are no longer evident in these cells cytoplasm is filled with tough scleroprotein which is called keratin and derived from keratohyaline granules and tono fibrils and the last one is the stratum corneum it is most superficial layer of the epidermis it contains flattened cells non nucleated dead cells and scaly keratinized cells and plasma membrane of these cells is thickened and cytoplasm is filled with keratin these cells the cells of this layer are continuously shed from the superficial surface now we see the different cells of the epidermis there are four types of cells first one is the keratinocytes and uh, these type of cells these keratinocytes are the most abundant cells 90% of the cells in the epidermis are keratinocytes that undergo keratinization and form the above mentioned five layers 
The main function is to produce a tough complex, chemoprotein keratin. This keratin is composed of a mixture of amorphous protein, uh, which comes from keratohyaline granules, and a fibrillar protein, which comes from the tonofibrils. And this uh, keratin provides protection to the skin. As these cells, keratinocytes migrate from basal layer or stratum basal toward the surface, they begin to undergo keratinization. And now what is the keratinization? In this process, following events takes place. First one is the loss of mitotic potential. Second is keratin synthesis. Third is thickening of the plasma membrane. Fourth one, disintegration of nuclei and organelles. And the last one, cornification and desquamation of the cells. And these dead cornified keratinocytes are shed periodically from the surface and their lifespan is 15 to 30 days. Next is the melanocytes. These are the second most commonly seen cells and they are derived from the neural crest cells. They are found in the basal layer of the epidermis. They appear as clear cells in hemotoxin and eosin stained sections. They are round in shape. If you see the shape of the cell, they are round, with many cytoplasmic processes. And these cytoplasmic processes, they run between the keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum, the second layer of the epidermis. They can be stained histochemically with DOPA for DOPA reaction. They produce melanin pigment, which is dark brown pigment, and mainly responsible for the color of our skin. They transfer melanin pigment into the keratinocytes, and this process is called cytochrome secretion. Under electron microscope, melanocytes reveal a lack of tonofilaments and desmosomes, which were the characteristics of keratinocyte. Tyrosinase filled vesicles called melanosomes, which play an important role in the melanin synthesis also found in the cytoplasm. In the process of melanin synthesis, tyrosine is first transformed to DOPA by the action of tyrosinase, it's present in melanosomes, and then to DOPA quinone, which is converted after a series of transformation into melanin. Remember that absence of the tyrosinase activity leads to a condition known as albinism. Third one type of the cells is Langerhans cells. They are the third most abundant cells in the epidermal cell population, mainly found in the stratum spinosum, and also found in oral mucosa, vagina, and in thymus. And they can be stained with the dye, which is gold chloride. Like melanocytes, they also appear as clear cells with many cytoplasmic processes. These are the processes that run between the keratinocytes. If you see it un under electron microscope, these Langerhorn cells show presence of specific granules. These are tennis rocket shaped granules, which are called Birbeck granules in the cytoplasm. And absence of tonofilaments and desmosomes. What is the function? They participate in the body's immune responses. These Langerhans cells first recognize, then phagocytose, and then process for an antigens. And then they present these antigen to T lymphocytes for an immune response. So these cells function as antigen presenting cells of the skin. If you see the origin, they are mesodermal in origin, and uh, they are included in mononuclear phagocytic system. The last one type of cell is the Merkel cells. 
These are sensory cells present in stratum basal and they are associated with expanded terminal discs of nerve endings forming special receptors concerned with the touch sensation. Now we come to the dermis. It is vascular connective tissue. It is derived from mesoderm. And uh, dermis corresponds to lamina property of the mucous membrane. The thickness of the dermis varies from 0.3 millimeter to 4 millimeter. The dermis is thin in eyelids and thick in trunk. If we see that the dermis of the different animals, it is tanned commercially and is known as leather. We see that the, for descriptive purposes, dermis is divided into papillary layer and reticular layer. Now we see the papillary layer. This is superficial layer of the dermis is composed of loose connective tissue and it contains fibroblast, macrophages, mast cells, leukocytes, and sometimes pigmented connective tissue cells called chromatophores. In heavily pigmented areas like areola, circumanal region, etc. The uh, two melanocytes can be seen in Mongolian spots in the sacral region of the infants up to the fifth month. These are the Mongolian spots. The connective tissue of the papillary layer projects into the epidermis as dermal papilla. And these dermal papilla interlock with alternately with the epidermal ridges. And this, is, this forms dermoepidermal junction. And uh, more uneven, especially in thick skins. The dermal papilla contains either blood capillaries or mesonous corpuscles. This layer also contains perpendicular running collagen fibers called anchoring fibrils. These anchoring fibrils, fibrils bind the epidermis with the dermis and are responsible for tension lines seen on the surface. Now the second deeper layer of the dermis is the reticular layer. It is mainly composed of irregular collagenous connective tissue type 1 collagen. Though the fibers are irregularly arranged, if we see in general, they are longitudinally oriented in limbs and transversely oriented in the trunk and neck. And these are called cleavage lines. These make cleavage lines. It also contains network of elastic fibers. Uh, which become thinner in the papillary layer. This network is responsible, this network of elastic fibers in the reticular layer is responsible for elasticity and firmness of the skin. If we see the dermis, there are sweat glands, sebaceous glands, hair follicles, and erector pili muscles. In some areas, dermis contains smooth muscle, for example in penis, scrotum and nipple, and skeletal muscles in face and neck. Dermis has a rich network of blood and lymph vessels. They form two plexes. One plexus is located between papillary and reticular layer. This is called papillary plexus. And other is cutaneous plexus, which is between dermis and hypodermis. Similarly, veins of three plexes, two are found in the same plane as arterial plexus, and third one is disposed in the middle of the dermis. And we already studied that glomera, which is an osmosis between the arteries and veins, it is present in the certain areas of skin, especially in thick skin. This arteriovenous anastomosis is called glomerula. And blood passes directly from arteries to the vein. <coughs> and this uh, anastomosis or glomera play an important role in temperature and blood pressure regulation. 
If you see the other characteristic of dermis, it also contains cutaneous receptors like free nerve endings, pretrichial nerve endings, mesoners, corpuscles, and Pacinian corpuscles. Here the picture of thin skin, which contains hair follicle, and these are the spacious gland, which are identification points of thin skin, and this is epidermis which are shown different layers. First one is the corneum, stratum corneum, then these are the stratum spinosum. These are dermal papilla, and these are epidermal ridges, and the interlocking between these dermal papilla and epidermal ridges. Here is the sweat gland. These are vacuole type, empty spaces. These are adipose tissue. This whole thickness is of dermis. And this has two layers, papillary layer and the deeper reticular layer. This is also another picture of the epidermis and dermis. This is thin skin, we are seeing hair follicle. These are different layers of the epidermis. These are spacious glands and this duct is opening with the hair follicle. This is smooth muscle, erector pili muscle. This is subcutaneous adipose tissue. Another slide of hairy thin skin. Same, these are layers of the epidermis. This is hair follicle, spacious gland. This is muscle, smooth muscle, erector pali. This is sebaceous gland. This is another picture of thin, uh, thick skin, which has no hair follicle, no sebaceous glands. This is stratum corneum, which is a thick layer. And this from, we see from base, basement membrane, stratum basal with melanin pigment, this is stratum spinosum, then granulosum, then leucidum, this transparent layer. Then the last one, superficial stratum corneum. And these are the papilla, <coughs> dermal papilla. This is also a picture of thick skin. Now we see the glands of the skin. They are spacious glands, sweat glands. The spacious gland, oily secretions comes from the spacious glands, which keep the skin smooth and prevents from drying and watery secretion of the sweat glands keeps skin surface cool. So it helps in maintaining body temperature. This is spacious gland. These are found in the dermis of the skin. And this is simple acinar gland. They have one duct, the secretory portion, Black shape and ducts opens into the hair follicle. But in certain regions like uh, glands, penis, clitoris, and lips, uh, this duct opens directly onto the epidermal surface. And um, if you see the mode of secretion, this gland is classified as a holocrine gland. If you see the secretory essiness of the gland, it consists of a basal layer of undifferentiated flattened epithelial cells resting on the basement membrane and centrally placed rounded cells, sebocytes, which are filled with fat droplets. These rounded cells eventually become bigger and burst, outpouring the secretion. Sebum with remnants of nuclei and organelles. What is sebum? Sebum is the oily secretion which has antibacterial and antifungal properties. It contains lipids, cholesterols, and it esters. And the secretion of this gland is primarily controlled by the testosterone in males and ovarian and adrenal androgens in the females. Now is the applied anatomy of these glands. Any disturbance in the flow of the sebum may lead to formation of acne 
which is caused by inflammation of the spacious glands due to bacterial infection. And acne may contain pus and are usually confined to face in the teenagers. These are sweat glands or pseudo pseudoriferous glands. Sweat gland is found in the deeper part of the dermis, widely distributed in our body, but is absent in glands, penis, inner surface of prepuce, and margin of the lip. If we see the type of gland, these are simple coiled tubular glands whose duct usually opens onto the epidermal surface. The part of the duct present in the dermis is straight. This is straight duct and is lined by the stratified cubital epithelium. Whereas the part that passes through the epidermis is coiled and is limited by the epidermal cells. Secretory tubules are lined by simple cubital. If we see the secretory tubules, they are lined by simple cubital epithelium and are bigger in size and cross section and lightly stained, where the ducts are smaller in size. These are ducts and are darkly stained. If you see that sweat gland, there are two types of these glands which are present in human beings, namely acroine or mirocoline and the apocrine. These are the different glands, modified glands of the skin, mammary gland, seruminous glands in external acoustic meatus, glands of moles in eyelid, glands of Z's in eyelid, tarsal glands, amoebomian glands in the eyelid. These are modified apocrine sweat glands and these are the examples of modified sebaceous glands. Here, applied anatomy of the skin, psoriasis, which is common skin disease. It is present where the cells in the stratum basal proliferate very rapidly and they undergo keratinization within seven days. Normal keratinization takes 40 to 60 days. If this occurs quickly, then the cells proliferate and keratinization, then this type of picture is seen and results in increased thickness of the epidermis with immature keratinocytes and they produce raised red patches under white scales. And these cells are desquamated prematurely before the keratin is fully formed. Next is utiligo, another common skin disease in which melanocytes are destroyed due to an autoimmune reaction and uh, this results in bilateral depigmentation of the skin. These white patches are the seen on the surface. Next, mm -hmm. mole or neighboring. These are benign accumulation of melanocytes in the dermis, epidermis, or both. If there is chronic exposure to excessive ultraviolet light, it leads to various skin cancers such as basal cell carcinoma, affecting basal cells of the stratum basal or squamous cell carcinoma affecting squamous cells of stratum spinosum and malignant melanoma which affects the melanocytes. If we see the malignant melanoma, it is dangerous invasive tumor of the melanocytes and it may penetrate into dermis and invade the blood or lymph vessels, then it will gain wider ramification. Thank you.